Hello, and welcome to my QTP video tutorial, where I will show you how to write a function with inputs and a return value. In this video, I'll be answering the following three questions. First, what is a function with inputs and a return value? Second, what is a real-world example of a function with inputs and a return value? And third, how do I write the code to use it? As a reminder, to stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button. This moves us to our first topic, which asks the question, what is a function with inputs and a return value? A function is a reusable piece of code that has a specific task it is responsible for doing. Now, there are several ways to make a function not do the same thing every time. One of those ways is to pass in inputs, which can make the function do different things depending on the values that are passed in. After the function has completed its work, you can also have it return a value to you. This moves us to the second topic, which asks the question, what is a real-world example of a function with inputs and a return? So imagine with me, if you will, for a moment that you're going to a nice sit-down restaurant. You come in through the front door, uh, an attendant greets you. They then seat you at a table. A waiter or waitress will come, take your drink order, and give you a menu. Well, after a few moments, the waiter or waitress will return back with your drinks, and they'll then take your order. They'll then walk away from your table for a few minutes, uh, and after a few minutes has passed, they'll return with the food that you had ordered. This is an example of a function with input parameters and a return value. Now first, it's an example of a function because that is a repeatable set of steps that will happen every time you go to the restaurant. So every time you go to the restaurant, you'd walk through the front door, you'd be greeted by an attendant, they would seat you at a table, uh, a waiter or waitress would come, bring you your menu, take your drink order, come back with your drinks, take your food order, and then come back with the food that you'd ordered. So every time you go, those steps would be repeated. Now the input parameters are the food that you've ordered. So let's say, for example, you ordered soup and salad. So that would, in essence, be the inputs that you would provide to the function. Then the return value would be the food that the waiter or waitress brings back to your table. This now brings us to the third topic, which asks the question, how do I write the code to use it? I'll now show you how to write the code in QTP to create a function that has input parameters and a return value. To create a function, you need to begin by typing the word function, then hit the spacebar. You'll notice that once I hit the spacebar, QTP went ahead and did some additional work for me. As you can see, it created an empty line at line 2, and then it put the words end function on line 3. So QTP automatically recognized that I was looking to create a function. It knew that I would need to type in some code within the body of the function, so it created an empty line at line 2. And then it knew that I needed to have the words end function at the end for the code to work properly. So it went ahead and did that work for me. We now need to give our function a name. To make a call back to the real world example that we had used a couple of slides before, I'll call our function food order. But you can call your function anything you would like. It doesn't make a difference. Once you've typed in the name of your function, you can type in open parentheses. We're now ready to type in the inputs that will be passed into the function. Now, you do not need to pass in inputs. Uh, you can pass in one input, two inputs, or as many inputs as you would like. It doesn't make a difference. So you can name your inputs anything you would like. But for our example, I'll use order one, and then type a comma, and then a space to separate the inputs. Then I'll type order two. And this is making a callback to the real world example where I had ordered soup and salad. Once you've typed in all of your inputs, type a closing parentheses, then hit the enter key. We're now ready to type in the code of the body of the function that will actually be executed when the function is called. So in this function, what I would like to do is take the two items that have been ordered, our, our example, soup and salad, concatenate them together, then we'll send a return value out of the function that will say, here is your order of soup and salad, or it would really be the two values that were passed in for the two inputs. So I'll begin by creating a variable that I'll call total order. 
I'll then concatenate the contents of order one and order two together into a variable. Now to send a return value out of a function, what you need to do is reference the name of the function. Now the easiest way to do that is just double click the name of the function, copy it, click back down to the end of the function, paste it in, create a space, type in equals, create a space, and then type in whatever you would like to be returned out of the function. So for our example, I would like a string to come out to say, here is your order of, and then we'll reference the variable that we had created here on line two. So what will happen, when this function is run, its return value would come out as, here is your order of soup and salad, or whatever input values you topped in uh, for the two inputs that you had created. This now completes our video, uh, where I have shown you how to create a function with inputs and a return value. Thank you, and I hope that you have a great day.